Hello everyone and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video in which we begin with an entirely different Kerbal Space Program video in which we sent a five-seat Minmus SSTO uh, with a MUN flyby all the way back in 2015. I wanted to try and see if this mission was still possible and I, I wanted to see if the SSTO itself still works because I made this thing back in the day as you can see here. We have it all working from the craft file and you know I thought it'd be interesting to see A if this thing even still works, because there's been quite a few physics changes to the game since this thing made its first flight. And of course, I've improved, I hope, <laughs> as a builder and a pilot. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to see how, quote-unquote, technology has changed in the Kerbal Space Program scene. So we've got the craft file downloaded, we're going to send it on its first flight, and immediately we can see it's getting off the ground pretty well. I was actually fairly surprised how well this thing flew. I guess it has quite good TWR, because it has not very much fuel in it, and it's got three air-breathing engines to help propel it through the air. However, as we reach the upper, up, upper parts of the atmosphere where we need the nuclear engine, you can see things start to fall apart fairly quickly. We're not getting enough speed to enter an orbit, and ultimately we don't make it. I tried a few different times, which I'm kind of showing here, but I wasn't successful in any of them. So then what I did is I've cheated this thing into orbit, and as you can see, we didn't have any thrust from the nuclear engine whatsoever. So um, this is because, I don't know if you saw earlier, but what I used to do when making these long-range SSTOs was I would take the whiplash jet engine and clip it into the nuclear engine to create a sort of really good rapier engine that was custom. That doesn't work anymore, I guess, because the whiplash engine is technically occluding the nuclear engine, so I had to go back to basics. First of all, I tried uh, just having the two rapier engines, but they didn't provide satisfactory thrust to get this thing to a good speed. So then what I did was this uh, rather ridiculous two-stage setup where um, the whiplash engine is kind of a separate stage, and then once we need the nuclear engine, we just drop the whiplash and carry on with just the three remaining engines. Anyway, the original video was a tourist mission, and so we need some tourists and a pilot, since all my Kerbals in this save are currently on Lathe, performing all the missions for the Life on Lathe series. So I hit up Discord and asked people to comment. The first four people to lay name a Kerbal would get to be the tourists, and the, four and the fifth person, I should say, who comments a Kerbal name gets to be the pilot. And with that civil discussion out of the way, we have our Kerbal selected. The tourists will be AJ Kerman, Item Boxes Kerman, Flo Kerman, and Eggman Kerman, and then our pilot will be uh, Thanos Kerman. So uh, thank you Discord for your input, let's get back to the task at hand. And we can see our new uh, revitalized craft in its final form, so I guess in a perfect world this would have been an SSTO, not a two-stage to orbit, but I feel like this is the way this is like the most true to the original craft, you know, aside from it not being single stage, it pretty much looks kind of the same, functions kind of the same, and overall, you know, this is the kind of vibe I wanted to go with. So it'd be interesting to see if this thing can do the mission, and if I can do it better than I did all the way back in the day, although that will be up to you guys. What I might do, actually, is I might recreate the music video. I didn't used to do commentaries back in the day, I used to just make music videos, so I might just recreate the music video for this mission and see how it compares to the original to kind of give a more balanced comparison. Anyway, for the flight itself, I'm trying to mimic the flight plan I used to take when I made SSTO videos, a very steep climb all the way up to 10 kilometers, then flattening out, you relying on the uh, thinner atmosphere to rapidly pick up speed, and then of course using the nuclear engine once the atmosphere gets sufficiently thin where we can't just depend on air breathing engines, and then, you know, get into orbit, ideally with a, just over 2,000 meters per second of delta V. At this point in the flight, we are getting fairly high up. There goes the 20 kilometer mark. So this is a good time to detach that jet engine and fire up the nuclear stage as we finish off our ascent. As you can see, we have an enormous amount of oxidizers for what we really need. So I will be ending up with like less Delta V because I'll still have oxidizer on board, which is a feature of, uh, that I'd still like adding to KSP, you know, the ability to dump fuel, much like we already have the ability to dump ore. I think it'd be useful for personally because this thing would have a bit more Delta V if we did have that. Uh, ability. But, you know, regardless, we had enough to do the missions. It's not a big deal. It's just one of those little quality of life things that I think would be nice if Squad were to implement. I feel like it wouldn't really take that much coding anyway. Anyway, kind of off topic slightly. <laughs> I guess we're about to uh, conclude the ascent portion of this video because we're approaching our maneuver node to raise our periapsis above the common line, which will be done in three, two, one. There we go. So we're now in a circular orbit. All is safe. Thanos has done a brilliant job getting us to orbit. All of our tourists can breathe easy and set their sights on the minty moon of Minmus. I didn't plan that. 
So, fairly simple manoeuvre node. At this point, when you're in low curve in Norway, don't worry about getting kind of your uh, tilt relative to Minmus accurate. Just make sure your uh, your apoapsis is at the same level as Minmus is orbit. If you can get a Minmus encounter, great. But if you just get a close approach, that's fine. Because you'll need to do some anti-normal or normal adjustments on the way. And it's far cheaper to do those in kind of deeper space than, you know, directly above Kerbin. Well, obviously... You'll still be directly above Kerbin, but this close to Kerbin surface, it'll be much more expensive to do our normal and anti-normal uh, alterations. We want to do that at least halfway between uh, Kerbin and Minmus. So we're just focusing on prograde burns for now, and then we'll adjust the inclination once we're a little bit further away, uh, just to save a bit of delta V, because we have, we don't have that much delta V. We will, we will be coming in with a fairly tight budget uh, if we're going to execute this mission at all. So I wanted to try and make as many fuel saving maneuvers as possible that didn't necessarily involve gravity assists at this stage. We did have to use a man gravity assist later on. Spoiler alert for a couple of reasons. A, because we had to, I think. We didn't have very much fuel left. I mean, I probably could have done it actually without the man gravity assist by using air braking. But, you know, I kind of wanted to recreate that part of the original mission because that mission, I didn't have enough fuel at all. I needed to do the man gravity assist. And also in the original mission, I needed to do a man flyby regardless because my tourists I was doing an actual tourist contract in career mode, and one of the contract performance was a MUN flyby. So, a couple of reasons, that's why that's how I'm going to justify the fact I'm going to do a MUN gravity system later on, but we cannot get too ahead of ourselves. Here we are, arriving at Mimus. I didn't really discuss <laughs> much of the normal burn once we were, like, halfway between Kerbin and Mimus, but I feel like I talked about it beforehand, then you got to see it. Hopefully you can fill in the gaps. Anyway, we're going to do a quick uh, retrograde burn just to get ourselves into a nice circuit orbit around Mimus. You've got to be careful with Mimus because its terrain is very, very uh, lumpy. Mountainous might have been a better choice of words, but we're going to stick with lumpy. Uh, I always try and aim to be at least above 10 kilometers, ideally a little bit higher. Uh, above Mimus's surface just because its terrain varies so much you really don't want to make you want to make sure you're definitely not going to crash into the surface so I'm doing an inclination burn here which is a little bit of a waste of fuel in a way because we don't technically need to do that in order to get our surface landing but again I wanted to land near the uh, hotel and casino for our tourists so that's why I did that inclination burn just to make sure we were ending up on the right course but there it is looming into view and looming into physics range Basically, I'm just eyeballing it at this point. I wasn't doing anything particularly fancy or accurate, and we did end up getting a pretty bad uh, encounter, all things considered. We could have got a bit closer if I'd taken my time a bit more, but alas, I did not, so we did not. But, you know, we can do a little burn on the surface and just roll our way over. We did end up uh, overshooting it a little bit, though, because I forgot how weak the brakes are on these really tiny landing gear. On, th on this particular set of landing gear, at least, they have really, really mediocre break so we just went sailing past but hey we got a nice little drive-by shot of it didn't we uh but our Kerbals they couldn't care less they are very happy up there they're very excited to board the hotel and casino we could just show a quick shot of one of them going towards it and getting towards it but i don't want to spend too much on this part of the video because we're already nearly 10 minutes in and we should be starting to think about wrapping things up soon hopefully because it's only a bit of we don't need to you know <laughs> spend half a year here we do, however, have plenty of time for Thanos Kerman to get out of the pod and plant his flag. And I've actually got the same flag file I used for the original mission. This crappy Kerbin space tourism symbol, which is actually just a ripoff of the uh, National Space Centre here in the UK. Uh, their logo. So, I don't know what that... Take, <laughs> take what you will from that. Anyway... Time is of the essence here. All our Kerbals are back on board. We can get ourselves pointing uh, 90 degrees to the surface in order to get the most efficient descent, although it doesn't really make that much of a difference on Minmus, as long as we're going uh, either 90 degrees or 270 degrees, just so we're getting on as flat an orbit as possible around Kerbin. In fact, if anything, we want to be going for a slightly uh, tilted Minmus orbit, but honestly, it doesn't make too much difference in the grand scheme of things because we're going to be doing a MUN flyby, like I said earlier, so we can do any inclination uh, changes using the MUN's sphere of influence. So, again, same as before, going to be aiming for a Minmus orbit of at least 10 kilometers, but ideally a little bit more than that, just to ensure that we're definitely clear of all its terrain features. And then we can start aiming towards the Mun. I'm not going to show too much of the uh, planning of the maneuver node because it's really just a case of getting your orbit so that it intersects the line of the Mun's orbit and just keep pressing next or previous orbits and eventually you will just end up in a position where you're encountering the man it's quite easy so i didn't feel the need to show it 
when I was, a lot of people have asked me though, this is kind of a side topic. A lot, well, not really a side topic. It's very, very much a focal point is something I wanted to touch on in this commentary. A lot of people ask me how to get better at gravity assist. And the way I taught myself how to do gravity assist is by doing them out of necessity, not out of interest in them. You see, I made a lot of these uh, efficient SSTO missions back in the day where I would often find I didn't have enough fuel on Minmus. I'm like, oh crap, I'm going to have to do a gravity assist to get back to Kerbin. Does that even work in this game? So I had to play around with maneuver nodes and just by basically forcing myself to do them that way, I kind of learned how to do it and then eventually I could extrapolate that knowledge and use it for things like EVE gravity assists. And so eventually what you see today where I'm doing massive SSTOs to ELU and places using lots and lots of gravity assists to get my flights to work properly. So it's really just building up to it. It's like I recommend uh, Apollo style Mimbus missions to get better at docking. Mun gravity assists to get from Mimbus to Kerberin are a good way to get a good grasp of the basics of gravity assists, especially when you need to do it in order for the mission to work. Ah, it's quite a good, it's quite a good little thing to practice. And I believe that the actual mission I'm recreating here is the very first time I ever actually did a gravity assist. See, I never really rehearsed these missions, I just sort of do them. And so that was the first gravity assist I ever did in the game, I'm pretty sure, was in that video. Or at least it was the Mimus S2 video before it. I should probably check. The reason I'm not recreating my very, very, very first Mimus mission is because that was also my very first commentary I ever did. So I feel like I should probably go back and just watch the commentary. Maybe add like a little subtitle uh, inner thought process. I don't know. Something interesting to do. I haven't really thought about it. But I think this mission was better than the other one anyway. So let's go with that. And you can see our tourists on board are getting very excited that they're getting to see their second celestial body up close. We're doing a nice reasonably low flyby, sort of just under 10 kilometers away from the moon's surface. So we're going to flip ourselves upside down so we can get the best possible view out of those admittedly fairly small windows. But I feel like it's the experience that counts here. Look how happy Flo Kerman and Item Boxes Kerman, as I'm, and as I'm sure, AJ Kerman and Eggman Kerman look as well if I were to ever bother showing their portraits for this scene. But I'm sure you know it's a fairly safe assumption. They are loving it because Kerbals love space, Kerbals love the Mun. They love everything. Uh, including my Patreon page, which is in the... I'm, j I'm joking, guys. Um, so, we get to the final part of this mission, which is lowering our periapsis so that we're entering the atmosphere. I aimed for a periapsis height of about 45 kilometers. So we're just going to wait till we're swinging around till burning at exactly apoapsis to save as much fuel as possible because we only have a smidge over 100 meters per second. So not very much at all remaining. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't, done, shouldn't have done all those liberal burns at Minmus to get nice and close to the hotel. I should have been a bit more mindful of my fuel consumption, but we, at least we have the atmosphere to help us slow down. And I guess from a realism, in you know, a quote, standpoint, uh, it's good that we did the bulk, or at least the first chunk, of our apoapsis lowering using the Mun sphere of influence and its, gra well, its gravity well. Uh, just we're not spending quite as much time entering the atmosphere at ludicrous speeds. So there's the first air break done. That was probably the hottest one we're going to have to do. The rest are going to be a little bit easier. What I'm doing here is I'm pumping as much fuel as I can to the front tanks. Just to make sure our craft remains nice and balanced on entry. But I'm not even sure if it was really necessary to be honest. Because this is a fairly well balanced craft all things considered. So, but there it is anyway. So there's our first uh, kind of aero capture done. We're going to do the second one now. I didn't bother editing the uh, modifying the periapsis at all. Because again, I'm trying, I'm trying to minimize the amount of fuel expenditure used. So we're just, we're basically trying to keep our periapsis the same. I'm only going to start raising it once we basically have to. I feel like I was stumbling a lot my way. I, I feel like I always have to avoid looking at the screen when doing these commentaries because otherwise I get really lost and I start trying to talk way too fast to keep up with what I'm seeing on the screen, which the speed I play back my footage, it's not very easy to uh, keep up the, uh, the, keep the commentary up to speed. I'm doing it again. Keep the commentary up to the same speed. So I tend to just end up, my mind, it drifts. <laughs> so... I feel like I touched all the points I wanted to in this commentary, really. Um, like I say, I wanted to re do this mission to see how the uh, game has changed on my and how it's affected my earlier SSTOs, and I guess it's affected them quite significantly now that they don't they don't work basically. But I suppose you know the parts we're using are somewhat gimped compared to their original versions too. Mainly those Mark One liquid fuel tanks, which in this craft only have capacity for 150 units of liquid fuel, not the 400 units they're able to carry in the current version. Which side note, it's interesting that the old variation actually exists in the game if it's loaded with a craft file like this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what other, other changes were made that would affect the parts in this craft, but regardless, I don't think there was anything, you know, too dramatic. But it was just, it was from a time when the uh, atmosphere had been completely overhauled in the game and everyone's SSTOs broke. SSTOs pre 
the 0.9. Was it 0.9 or 1.0? I feel like it was 0. Um, 1.0, sorry. Um, SSTO's pre-1.0 looked drastically different to what they do now. It was basically just a bunch of intakes and whiplash engines because you could get into space using just whiplash engines and loads and loads of air intakes. That changed completely. And at first, people thought that SSTOs were only possible to get into, like, LKO. I was one of the... I still maintain a bit of sense of pride um, that I was one of the first players to get an SSTO landing on Mimus without the need for refueling or whatever. And then it gradually cascaded from there. At first I thought it wouldn't be possible to ever do a MUN SSTO, and then people and myself gradually did it. And then look where we are today, you know, we're getting these insane monstrosities from all sorts of people. So it's, it's kind of cool to see technology evolve. Uh, in terms of KSP innovation, even though the parts stay largely the same, just community knowledge and everyone working together as a big group, figuring all these puzzles out. It's one of the reasons I, I love this game. And there we are, is the landing. Didn't talk about it too much, but I guess it's one of those things you can just see and you can get it. Um, nice little pan around shot of the SSTO before we can talk about the end screen. I guess we don't really need to because it's fairly self-explanatory. Talking about other videos I've made, though, hopefully I'm aiming for this Wednesday coming up. We're going to be going back to a weekly Planet Coaster. Obviously, KSB will remain the same, but we're going to be doing more Planet Coaster videos. I finally got enough raw footage that I'm happy to publish the park. So that look forward to that. And uh, yeah, everything else linked in the description. Merch, Instagram, Discord are in the description. And of course, on screen, you've got my subscribe and Patreon, all that good stuff. Uh, goodbye.